The next piece we'll be creating a low poly for is the ripper at the back end. And this really is the most complex piece on the bulldozer. So we're definitely going to have to uh, try and keep things efficient here as to not use too many polygons, as to not just create too much work for ourselves. Uh, the main bottom part, like this sort of U-shaped uh, bottom part, we're going to model that from scratch completely. There's just uh, no point in reusing the high poly items simply because well, they're made out of a bunch of separate objects while I would want to group this into a single object. So starting off with some uh, relatively simple box modeling to create the main shapes. Something like this. And just generally trying to roughly match things as close as I can. And I'm going to add a segment in here. Actually going to add a few. And with these segments, I can go and drag this one out here, a little bit like that. I'm trying to get that rounding for the central part right. And then do an extrude on this part here. Just make sure it sits correctly at the um, zero axis where I'll be doing my symmetry for this part. And so obviously, since it's a symmetrical part, we want to use symmetry for that. Adding an extra edge in here to make sure I can uh, I can make that curve. I'll probably need another part, so I'm just going to chamfer this. There we go, chamfered it. And one more chamfer. Well, before I do that extra chamfer, I don't know, it might be a bit too much, so I'm going to put them into place and then just manually add one in here. If I do use a chamfer, I would have added two extra edges. And I can get away with just creating one since this piece sits at the back. Now for the back end here, uh, for these sort of like attachment bracket places, plates, I'm just cutting some lines and then I'm using extrude to create these parts. So just using the scale tool together with move, it's a quick and efficient way of working. And then pretty much the same thing here at the top. And you'll notice that I try to do these things by first getting like the, the main rough shapes into the correct position first, and then afterwards going in and adding a few extra subdivisions to to allow me to uh, match the curves and the, uh, the corners uh, better. Because it makes sense to, to sort of model in this in this way. Uh, same for, we did that for the, for the high poly, with the low poly it also makes sense. Don't start overcomplicating things too soon. Just start out with modeling them blocky and simple. And then afterwards, just go in and add some extra edges. Things are a bit easier when you're doing low poly though, because you don't really have to match proportions or that sort of thing, because you've already done this work when creating the high poly. But still, you just want to keep an efficient modeling workflow. So it pays off to uh, stick with this method. So moving these into place there, and moving those into place as well. Then we've got this part over here, which is interesting also. Selecting these, pushing that up. And then once we have that, I'm going to have to add a few more edges. I am creating a few end golems here by doing this, but I'll go back in later and clean those up. So we're extruding that part, just pulling it up all the way to the top, scaling it so we get the general proportions right like that. And then first fix up the end guns, switching between like target weld, connect, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's done. And I'm going to try and create this thing. Let's see if we have to create this as one piece. Probably not necessary to do that. So I'm just going to clean these things up. It makes more sense to have that bracket as a separate part. At first, I thought I was going to do it as a single piece, but I don't think that's really necessary. So again, at the bottom. And you can see uh, the previous parts, I had cleanup sessions more towards the end. But now and then, I just try to take a little pause and start target welding stuff together. So 
So this piece, it'll be symmetrical, so I'm just going to delete one half to save myself some work, to save texture space. So there we go, that should match the silhouette of the high poly nicer. And then I've created this cylinder here so that I can do a boolean. Uh, I'm doing a boolean because, you know, it's just a little bit quicker. Do take note, this is very important. I tried to match the amount of segments on the cylinder with the amount of segments that sit at the top. So I can quickly do a simple connect like this. And the amount of edges just nicely matches up. So I hope you can see there's no, no mismatch between uh, the size that I'm using here. It's all been considered that this looks clean. And I have the central part here. I'm going to snap it into place there. So um, attach this part to the main thing, and that should be it. Now all we need to do is add a symmetry to that. That I need to set my pivot into the correct position first. So trying to make sure that it sits correctly. I'm going to want to move that around by using snapping. Snapping it to that point. And that should make sure that I can use a correct symmetry here. Adding the symmetry modifier, and that looks about right. So time for another part. This is on the underside. Uh, this is a sort of attachment plate with um, some sort of dangling hook on it. I think this hook is to attach chains or to allow the bulldozer to pull something. So first we're creating the mounting plate to which the hook is mounted. And some extra edges there to make sure that the silhouette is matched. Then we're going to try and make use of the edges we have here to create this piece. Need one extra there just to make sure that the silhouette is as good as it can be. Connecting those up. And then for the hook, um, I'm just going to pick the high poly mesh and reuse that one. Clean it up slightly. And as you might see, the silhouette of the high poly block out doesn't always necessarily match the uh, high poly as, as good as you think. Like you'd expect it to match it perfectly, but it doesn't. So you have to adjust this sometimes. Then we're going to continue on this main part. I'm sort of jumping around a little bit here, but uh, I'm trying to work a little bit from the back and the bottom to the front and the top. So moving this around a little bit. And then I'm going to use a slice plane to slice in here. It's a quick way to add some vertices. Should be able to work with that. And then I'm going to use chamfer on these edges and move them around a little bit so that there's a nice curve in there. Okay, with that done, I'm going to leave these insides. And you notice that the front part there, I've already modeled that. It's nothing too difficult. There were just some extrudes and moving of points. Now here again for this detail, I use the high poly mesh. And you'll notice I just do that a lot. For certain details that have a, a specific shape that still isn't Overcomplicate, I'm just going to reuse these things. So we're trying to clean this up as much as I can. Optimize a little bit with target weld. Welding these things into place. Can weld those as well. And then get rid of the polygons on the bottom. We don't really need those. So that piece looks like it's about good to go. Maybe move those around a little bit. And then I've grabbed the same high poly mesh there, cleaned it up, and I've attached it to the main object. Again, using a symmetry. Now, time for this funny little thing. Some sort of part of the hydraulic system. And again, doing a clean up here. You can see, remove quite a few things. I just have to clean up this little part here. This one is extremely detailed. So I'm going to use the dot ring to remove every other piece there. You can go even further and remove every two and three. Uh, I just decided not to do that. I'm going to target weld a few pieces here to optimize this as well. The whole reason for that is this thing is very small. 
and you can't really see the silhouette so much. So we can just uh, optimize this a lot. I could probably even have gotten away with optimizing that a bit more. But again, the ripper is supposed to be one of the show off pieces here. So it's time to use a symmetry on the main part. That looks about right. There's the hook at the bottom. We still have quite some pieces to do with on the bottom part. And now we're going to do this uh, mounting bracket plate for the two main pistons. A very specific shape. There's a lot of cleanup involved here. But again, because the shape is so specific and because the, the actual number of segments in this silhouette is pretty much good to go for the low pulley, I still prefer to reuse it. First, try and match the silhouette a little bit better. The top here, this should be slightly rounder. So there we go. Move those in. And then do some optimizing. And once I've target weld a whole bunch of them, slightly skipping ahead. Again, making sure the silhouette matches nicely and then bridging these up so we are avoiding end gons. Bit more to do here. And again, a lot of target welding to clean this thing up. We're slightly jumping ahead now and then here just to avoid showing you the really tedious process. Basically, you need to try and keep the silhouette while reducing the pull count as much as possible, which in some cases could involve quite a bit of effort. We're going to connect these up so we have a nice triangle there. And target weld these as well. You can use some more target welding there. There's quite a lot you can optimize here. This piece as well. And that's starting to look about right. So right now we have to snap this into place so we can do a symmetry on this part. Looks about right. The next up is this big piston here. And that big piston, again, there's a very specific shape where it goes from a round piece into a hexagonal piece. And I don't really want to redo that. So I'm just going to keep the part where I've actually gone through the effort of um, changing the cylinder into the hexagonal part. I'm trying to snap this little one into place because it was slightly misaligned. And once it sits correctly, I can just go in and clean these up. So that's been removed. But there's a bit of cleanup work here at the front, so just removing everything there. And obviously we don't need to keep all quads so we can weld these tries in. Once that's done, we're just going to rebuild this uh, area here. I'm going to match the silhouette slightly closer. And capping this area. And this piece, slightly too big. It was hard to see when it's covered by the high poly. So I'll just get the height in the correct position and then scale it down. Now, this is a little bit too crude. I'm going to chamfer this again. Then, obviously, I have to sort out all the end gons here. The easiest thing, instead of all target welding them, is just to select them and use edge constraints and scale them out, select everything, and weld. Very quick way to do this. I'm going to cap that part up. And you might be able to tell already that this is a, a lot of segments for such a small part. So we're definitely going to go in and clean that up. So I'm going to do a dot loop. Then use edge constraints with rotate. And again, weld everything in to optimize that slightly. I think I can even do it again. But there we go. Make it even further optimized. And rotate a little bit. And I also think this one might have a few sides too much. So I'm going to use the loop tools to fix the rounding on that after I've uh, changed that around. You can see it's acting a little bit weird here. Loop tools really are a bit difficult to work with. There's nothing that's, uh, that you can't fix by just manually tweaking it a bit afterwards. So there we go, that's about right. Okay, so changing the color just to show that it's a low poly part, not a high poly part. 
Then I'm going to salvage this hydraulic connection uh, piece. And obviously I need to make it a lot simpler. So I'll get rid of these details. Bridge that. Then get rid of that edge. Get rid of these as well. There's a couple more edges here which I can optimize out. This should be slightly more rounded though. Since this part again, it's going to be quite visible. I think it pays off to use some detail there. And you notice that in the high poly as well, I modeled the um, the bent tube as a single piece. So I'm just keeping it like that in the low poly. It makes things a bit easier. There we go. So add some detail to that part. And this one can be reused quite a few times. So I'm just instancing it around, getting it into the correct position and rotating it as well. Now this piece here is uh, the connection for the piston at the bottom. And I just reused the high poly parts and cleaned it up. Very simple. Just making sure to clean up the segments now and then. And then I'm parenting these together, smoothing them, trying to get the smoothing groups to work right. And then next up is the top piston which is a bit different where it transfers from a round piece into an actual square uh, cross profile. So again, I'm going to clean that up a bit. Removing a lot of redundant edge loops. Some more redundant edge loops here and at the back as well. Just going over all of them like we've done before. It seems like this piece I also missed out a little bit. So again, I'm going to use snapping to fix it up and then remove these extra edge loops. With that done, I can do some more optimizing at the front here. I'm going to grab this entire thing and instead of target welding all those things, separately just decide to target well all of these and with all of those target welded i can just use border and shift move to recreate them i think i do want a few more segments on this area it's a little bit under detailed so that's what i'm going to do here And let's see. I have a few too much, so again, I'm removing some. I actually only want to add um, not as much as you do by doubling them up. So I'm using the trick here with loop tools again. Really, like if you use these correctly, uh, you can do things which previously you think are impossible. Like, uh, changing the amount of segments on a cylinder. There's still limits to it, but you can do operations like adding two thirds of what you want and that sort of thing. So molding this piece, capping it with the rest, and it seems to cap it just fine, really. And inset that a little bit. Then when using scale, scale actually does a better job at it than inset. So I prefer using that. Doing these uh, these sort of cylindrical radial pieces, really, you can do some smart tricks with a uh, scale tool, ring selections, that sort of thing, which makes it a lot more fun to model these things and you can try and be uh, a lot more efficient. So again, I use the loop tools to make this one perfectly round. It does tend to mess up the rotation sometimes. So I need to rotate that back manually. Also it tends to remove them from their planar alignment, so I try to redo that as well. Let's get this down a bit. Cap. Move it out. I want to reuse that part from the bottom. Why? Well, because it's it's really it really is the same part and it will just sh uh, save me some UV space when I do it like that. So there we go. It doesn't look perfectly aligned. So I'm going to use 
And it just looks like it's not getting aligned perfectly. So let's see. We'll, we'll toggle that one later then. And there's this uh, shield at the back here, which has a very complex wireframe. But it has a good profile, so we want to try and reuse that. Oh, this thing is a bit messy. A lot of cleaning to do here. Sometimes it helps if you target weld a few small parts and then use a, a control backspace on them because it might be quicker. Like we have a little problem there, we'll fix that in a moment. Target weld all of these together. Just keep target welding and collapsing these things. I'm probably going to do this for um, only one side and then using something like shell on it so I don't have to do it twice on both sides. This one, well, it's just quicker to remove it with uh, control backspace. Same for this one and same for that one. Just remove it. Okay. So we've got a lot of them in here. So I've kept only a single face, uh, like a single side of it, and then just use shell to create a thick version of it. Then placing that into the little poly layer, making sure I get the thickness right. Should be good for that part. Now we've created most of these hydraulics here, copying those over to the other side. And next up is going to be the actual shank. So we're just creating a box to start off with, since that's the main shape of the ripper. Again, matching it up with the high poly. And then I'm straight away going to start cutting some shapes in there to make sure that I can add all the extra detail that's required. So this looks like uh, there are a few places where I should add these main cuts. Over there, and add one here. And for this one, I'll just extrude that part. Same here. Trying to make a few things as one piece that are not done in this way in the high poly. A few, a few of these pieces are just shoved together. I'm trying to avoid that because it'll bake easier. Move that out a little bit to create this sort of uh, upstanding edge. Turn well those things. And this is a bit of a complex shape, so requires a bit of effort to get it right. Move that up slightly. Okay, so once that's correct, shift move these out. Shift move that back in there. I'm gonna try and use this one edge. To already get some curve in there. And once that curve should be about right, we're going to use chamfer to add some detail to those edges. And immediately I have to weld a few verts here so that I don't have any end gones. I'm going to connect those up. And next up, I'll extrude this part here. It looks about right. And moving this down just to match the high poly shape. Adding another segment in there, like that. I think I need to move those out slightly to get to match better. Then back to the bottom, creating these big attachment brackets to attach the actual ripper to the whole, uh, like, mounting, the big mounting board. Making sure to always add the right amount of segments so that it reads correctly. And thinking these should be a little bit wider to make good use of them. And at the bottom here, I've rounded these parts off a bit, and then I'm going to close the rest of the bottom up. So this part here. It's actually a bit trickier. I can't just do uh, what I just did there. 
I'm going to have to connect them to a cylinder there. So I've actually created this cylinder here. I'm going to keep the part of it that's required and then model everything so that it connects up with that cylinder. Connecting these to avoid the end gons. Again, I'm going to bridge that part, cap that part. And with this thing, I can reuse that over there. And the difficult part is I need to like slice part of a cylinder. So what I'm going to do is model it as a straight piece, like I'm doing here. Snapping that in place there, just snap and weld. Then cutting in this extra piece here so I can actually weld that vertex because it's quite important that it, it's, a, it's a single solid piece before I start cutting parts off. So again, a cut and a weld. Once I've done that, I need to select the polygons. I need to make sure I select a little bit more than required. And now I can remove them, select the polygons. And then use the slice plane tool in top view. Like that. And just hit the slice button. And now we need to get rid of all of this. And make sure not to delete those edges. There we go. First, a little bit more optimizing. I'm going to close that gap up. When doing something like this, where you have to do a cut at an angle in a cylinder, I think that's really difficult uh, with normal tools to do that. So I prefer to use the slice plane for that. I think it's a quick and easy way to solve these problems. So this piece actually is slightly indented. So that's why I'm adding these edges in here so I can create those indentations. And once I have that, I'm going to extrude this inwards. It goes quite far. And then connect up the end gons so we avoid any problems there. So there's a big piece of the main shape is there, but there's still some details attached to it. And we have the actual, uh, like the shank is what they call it. I still need to create. So sometimes I try to use, um, I try to hold down shift when I'm doing swift loop, because in some cases, like where the flow is really obvious, it tries to help you out by uh, trying to conform to the flow that you're trying to create. And it's, it's quite a handy thing to use at times. So making sure to clean things up a bit. This part is quite visible, so I need to make sure that the silhouette there is, is decent. And then there's like a thicker part at this end here. So I think I'm going to use um, an extrude or something there, or I'll just add some extra edges like that. That should work as well. Need to bring them out slightly. I think I like to use an extrude here. And that should match this shape about right. And that needs to be a little sharper. And then over here, there's this piece that goes straight up, which I'm going to have to create as well. Once I create that, I'm just going to do an extrude here and then clean up some of the shape and move it around so that it matches up nicely. And I've created a little bit too much over there. So I'm going to move this around. There we go. And get rid of the rest of the polygons that I don't need. And then just close it up by shift moving these out, setting them to the zero axis, and then adding a symmetry to this piece. There we go. Symmetry looks correct. So that's it for that big shank part. There's only a few pieces left now. These, these things at the back, they're not very, very complex. It's a box with um, sort of a half cylindrical shape attached to it. 
Doing some simple modeling. Trying to not go too complex for this piece, as long as the, the rounding there is okay, because it'll definitely be visible in silhouette. Extra one there. And I need one more. I'm just going to use a connect to that point. Connect at one edge and move that out over there. And then connect these up so we don't have any end gons. Seems like that side is sticking out a bit too far also, so I'm moving it around. Let's get a bit of a compromise between the high and the low pulley. And then we have this uh, this piece over here. I'm going to have to model that in as well. First doing some optimizing. And then cutting in some extra edges so I can extrude this squarish piece. Then moving that out. And let's see if I can weld these things up. Just use target weld to connect those. And connect those as well so we avoid the end gons. It's best not to do that at the bottom. And this thing here, again, one of these prime examples of um, a, a detail that you have to model in low poly, but where it just pays off to reuse uh, the high poly mesh there. Uh, just a, a ton of cleanup work here. I think this is one of the one of the meshes that required most of the cleanup. And some some of it, some edges might seem like you don't need them, but they might contribute to the silhouette elsewhere. Um, so well, for those, I try to not use the loop before I remove them. But I'll just go and manually select the ones that I want to remove. So tons and tons of edges to remove here. See, for example, that part there, I don't want to get rid of it right away. I'm trying to pick out the really, really obvious one for obvious ones first. And then going for the less obvious uh, ones are the ones that are actually contributing to the silhouette last. Then going to this cylinder here. This whole ridge, we don't really need that. Just using control backspace on it all the time. Same for this bracket piece here, removing it. Once we've cleaned it up, we really won't have to do much uh, before we can call it a low poly mesh. But need to get rid of some edges first. These things, I think, I think I can put them, uh, make them slightly simpler. Another edge that we can get rid of. Simplifying the shape a bit, and target welding these together. And once I target weld them, I just use loop to get rid of the rest. Because once you target weld the point of a loop, it's actually going to stop looping around there. So it makes sense to do that. And these pieces here, like I said, I prefer to go a little bit simpler if I'm going to model them. So I'm just going to use a six sided uh, polygon there. And I'll go for that complex 12 sided or something. So most of that detail should be created. There's a few more things we have to do here. You can see I copied, uh, I created a light there as well. And what I did there was I copied the one from uh, that I've created earlier. And this piece here, very simple. You're barely going to see this. I do want to create it because you might see it in the shadow. And if it's not there, you'll be able to see through. Uh, there will be like a, an empty hole there. So that's why I'm going to create this. But not much more than a very, very basic shape. So just grabbing these things and moving them into the position that I need them to be. This edge here, maybe even a bit too much, but then again, two tries extra won't do much. So there we go. That one sits in the correct place. I guess I can get away with using just a regular box there, but I just go through the trouble of making it slightly nicer. 
So for the chassis, I'm going to go back in. And this piece here, I don't think it belongs to the chassis. So setting some smoothing groups on it also. Just setting some smoothing groups so in general it looks okay. Thinking I could do with a few less sides there because you won't really see it that much. Doesn't hurt to go back to something and then optimize a little bit afterwards. So, same thing here, optimizing it a bit. When you create something like this, you might get carried away at a certain point, so just remove some edges when you see when you see this and think it's fit to do so. And connecting those up to avoid the end gons. So that looks about right. Looking if there are any more problem areas here. This piece that I need to move out because it doesn't match up with uh, Apple other ways it's not connected. And I think I can reduce the amount of segments there, so getting rid of those. And doing some extra cleanup here as well by welding these pieces. Looks like we don't have that much optimizing left to do. Maybe some small parts here. Looks like we have some end gons there. So we just select a few vertices and connect these up so we get rid of that. And it looks like there's a last one over there. So another connect. I think that should be it for the uh, optimizing of the chassis. Now let's bring that ripper out again. This is what we have so far in low poly, minus the suspension. And next up is the blade.